Hello, my name is Justin Watkins. I'm a professor of Burmese at SOAS in the University of London. And I'm going to uh, give you a short talk today on the Wa language, also known as Peral, uh, language of China and uh, Myanmar. And I've been invited to do so by Nathan Hill, director of the Trinity College Dublin um, Institute for Asian Studies. Okay, so Wa is an Austroasiatic language, and as such, is in the minority. Most of the languages spoken in China are Tibeto Burman languages, relatives of Chinese um, and uh, Tibetan. Hmong Khmer is a language family where the largest concentration of languages are found in peninsular Southeast Asia, as you can see on this map. And the Wa languages are the larger um, orange blob in that small collection of languages, one branch of Austroasiatic, of Hmong Khmer, um, known as the Palangic languages. Um, and most of the Palangic languages are spoken in Myanmar and China, uh, a few in uh, Northern Laos as well. Okay, so Wa speakers are located in the in uh, what Divlot um, called the Wai Corridor. So the area, the geographical area between the Salween and Mekong rivers. This area straddles the southwestern Chinese province of Yunnan, the Shan states of northeastern Burma and northern Thailand. And the Wa are thought to be the autochthonous inhabitants of the area. It's likely that speakers of northern Hmong Khmer languages were settled in the area earlier than speakers of Tibeto Burman and Thai Kadai. So let me go back to the map. And uh, the impression you get is that uh, Hmong Khmer languages, certainly the smaller Hmong Khmer languages, so leaving aside uh, Cambodian and Vietnamese, are the remnants of the population, a larger population or a more widespread population speaking Hmong Khmer languages who have been displaced by the arrival of speakers of Thai, Thai languages, speakers of Myanmar and other Tibetan Burman languages. Um, so let's go on. The standard variety of Wa is known as Peralp um, and is based on, and that's based on the variety spoken in the village of Yen Shui in Chinese, Ai Shui in, in Wa. There are about 1.2 million speakers, including Peralp and uh, other varieties of the language. And it has to be said that Wa is a complex cluster of many dialects, um, perhaps 40 or more, many of them undescribed or poorly described, lumped together or split wrongly. Um, it's a confusing picture, but uh, taking a, a slightly more lumping rather than splitting approach, two thirds of the speakers of Wa are in China, about one third in Myanmar, so um, a little over a million in total. So it's a significant language in uh, Yunnan. Most of the speakers are down near the border, um, but the Wa get around. Um, I won't be talking much about the the about Wa society and politics in this talk, but if you um, go and read up, you'll find that there are um, an interesting people with uh, an amazing history, fiercely independent. They have a, um, a semi-independent state um, nestled next to the Chinese border, and in many ways are politically more affiliated to China than they are to Myanmar, but it's a complex and um, extraordinary picture. Um, Recent migra migrations have seen Wa villages established in northern Thailand. There's a Wa presence in Yangon, in Damji, Mandalay, and other big cities in Myanmar, and also in Kunming and um, uh, across Yunnan province. There are Wa in Beijing. So they get around. Um, okay, I'm going to get linguistic and a bit more technical straight away. So, first of all, a little bit about how Wa has been written down. First thing is to say that it's not written all that much um, and that there is a split orthography. So two parallel orthographies have been developed for Wa. One, and the, the two that I'm gonna focus on are the two found in the Wa dictionary that I spent uh, uh, many years compiling with colleagues, uh, which was published in 2013. And um, in that dictionary, we used uh, official the official WA orthography, which is approved by the Literacy Committee of the United WA State Party, so the authority that's uh, in control in, um, in WA State, the sort of autonomous WA area in uh, Northern Shan State. Um, and that was developed by improving on and developing the defective orthography used in a 
um, an early 20th century translation of the New Testament done by Vincent Young with our colleagues and others. Um, and Vincent Young was unable to hear lots of the um, uh, phonological contrasts in Wa. Um, uh, they didn't mark breathy aspirates. You'll see a bit more about the sound system of Wa shortly. He couldn't hear the register contrast, so a quasi-tonal contrast um, of breathy and um, modal uh, phonation. Um, so that's not marked. And final glottal consonants, so final H's, final glottal stops, not marked. So there's a lot of syllables that are written, that are sound different, but um, written the same um, in the original New Testament orthography. Um, and over the years, the um, wa on the Myanmar side of the border, where this is uh, where this orthography is um, is used, and Christian wa and people associated with um, uh, with the descendants of that translation of the of the New Testament, um, they've cast around to find improvements. So ways of marking final glottal consonants, ways of marking the register contrast. We'll see a bit more about that later. Anyway, on the other side of the border in in China. Um, after the establishment of the People's Republic of China in 49, so in the 1950s and onwards, um, linguist anthropologists were commissioned. They were sent from Beijing to the, to the four corners of the, of the Republic, the People's Republic, to um, describe and uh, develop writing systems for many of uh, China's minority languages, including what. And um, what they did uh, after a, um, a slightly um, unusual prototype writing system had been developed, which was more suitable for linguists, really. Um, they developed a writing system for Wa, which aligns nicely in its treatment of various sounds with um, the pinyin uh, transcription used for standard Chinese. And this Wa orthography used in China is phonologically accurate, but it's not in wide use. It's used for formal trans official translations of documents into Wa. Um, but it's not used by all that many people. But there's quite a lot, quite a lot of printed stuff that you can find in Wa uses it from China. So let's have a look. So here's a Wa sentence to give you a first bit of Wa language material. So the sentence, have you read my letter yet? Lai bo te gung hoi jack mai no. Something like that. I'm not a native Wa speaker, obviously, but it sounds something like that. And you can see that uh, the prototype PRC WA orthography here um, is one that uses some syllables, some symbols are borrowed from um, Russian and Russian tr transcription of Mongolian. Um, so a little bit outlandish, they use a Q for a final glottal stop. And we see that in, in various places. So some redundant letters used, some new letters used. They're using the um, uh, Cyrillic hard sign to mark um, uh, to mark uh, clear register. Um, and so that was the prototype. And then that morphed into what's described here as the PRC orthography, where a bar over the vowel is used for a breathy vowel and the absence of the bar used for uh, a clear register vowel. Um, and the treatment of final palatal consonants. So uh, Mon Khmer languages have final palatals. You find them in Khmer. Um, they're, used, they're written using uh, a G, so a vela with a preceding I, which kind of gives an impression of the I of the E off glide before palatal consonants. And that, that word for already or the yet is pronounced hoit, hoit. So it's a palatal final spelled IG in PRC orthography. In official wa, they didn't want to use final palatals. They didn't want to use a C or anything like that. Final palatals either. That's spelled IT in um, official WA. So you have to have your wits around you, depending on where your WA text is from, to work out who's written it when, which side of the border that splits the WA between Myanmar and China. And um, uh, in fact, since this material was produced, the um, Literacy Committee of the United WA State party has revised official WA again. Um, so there should be another line in this table. Okay, so let's come back to the register contrast in WA. So in WA, instead of having a tonal split between high and low that you might find in other Mon Khmer languages, or you find uh, sets of high tones versus low tones in, in Chinese or in Thai, Vietnamese, 
Um, Wa has um, clear and breathy phonation contrasting uh, rather than tones. And the register contrast um, is phonetically a complex of uh, phonetic correlates. So fundamental frequency, clear registers slightly higher in frequency than um, breathy register, vowel quality, so breathy vowels are a little bit more open. Phonation type, breathy, breathy phonation in, in the breathy register, and vowel duration, so lax breathy vowels are a little bit longer. What's um, interesting is that there's no um, phonation type contrast, there's no register contrast in syllables um, with an initial laryngeal consonant, so or with a with aspiration in the initial consonant. Um, but you do get the register contrast if there's final a final glottal consonant, so like an H or a glottal stop. So here is a set of contrasting syllables. So the words, um, sorry, I, there's a mistake on there. the second word for peach should be sweet. So there is peach, and there with two dots under it means sweet. So there, there. Less is there, and turn is there. Land is there, and wager is there. I'll change the slide so you can't see that mistake anymore. Right, and here is, um, I mentioned earlier that on the Myanmar side of the border, the, there were various attempts to bring the uh, spelling system used in the new, old New Testament translation of Wa to bring it up to up to par by adding things to represent the register contrast, which wasn't represented in earlier forms of the language. And what they did, I think, was look at neighboring languages. And um, they decided that you could mark a, there we go, we've got sweet and peach the right, the right way around. So sweet is there and peach is there um, here in the table. Um, the clear register, so the non-breathy register, is written with two dots after the syllable. So T-I-E, I-E is the, a digraph used for the vowel air. The two dots tell you it's clear register, not breathy register. And I think they were looking at high tone in Burmese, which uses something that looks like two dots to mark a high tone. Um, and the absence of that means it's a uh, breathy register, which is lower in, in pitch. Oops. Um, so we've got some minimal pairs here. There, sweet, there, peach, and I'm overdoing it um, for illustrative purposes. The register contrast isn't phonetically quite as distinct as that. The words for head and work, head is gang, work is gang. Um, other ways of marking register contrast, if there's a final, um, final stop, you use the unvoiced syllable P um, in clear register, the voice syllable B in breathy register. So nap and nap are spelt with different final consonants. And that reflects a little bit the way that uh, Thai consonants have a, a link with tone. If you've learned your Thai tone rules and do a bit of historical phonology on Thai, you have uh, different consonant letters um, having an effect on the tone, which is read, um, which we're finding lots of orthographies around the region. Okay, um, however, in this um, version of official wa orthography, if there's a final glottal stop um, and an X is used for a glottal stop in this version, which they borrowed from the Chinese orthography instantly, in, in, incidentally, um, they're both written the same. So that earth and debt to wager to bet are both written, spelt the same in official wa spelling. And I think that's been fixed now in the latest version. Um, Although at the time when I was compiling the dictionary, I had meetings with uh, people from the literacy committee of the um, United War State Party, and they told me I was not allowed to fiddle with the official orthography. It was the way it was. It's since been amended, but at the time I was not invited to offer my um, suggestions for improvement. But they have most certainly got there now. And it wasn't that they didn't understand, they were very aware of the complications of uh, writing war using. Roman script, which is a, a, a choice, obviously. They, it would be a lot easier to write Wa using, for example, Burman script. But um, for political reasons on the Chinese side, that's um, not something that's been suggested. Right, let's move on. OK, so consonants in Wa, we'll do a bit of phonetics phonology to start off. There's a four-way voicing contrast in initial stops, so voiced and unvoiced, aspirated, unaspirated. Um, 
initial consonants clusters are restricted. So this is sort of classic mainland Southeast Asian language in many ways. Final consonants are restricted to unreleased um, PT, P, um, labial, um, alveolar, um, palatal, and velar. Um, the same set of nasals and glottals. And then you get a final H, final IH, which is the reflex of, a, of an S and sounds like an S, so that's a bit like what you find in Khmer, where a written, fine, written, written um, S at the end of a syllable is pronounced, pronounced as an H, except in certain dialects. So that's probably a, a fairly recent change. Um, and there are a large number of breathy aspirated voice segments. Um, OK, so here's your little table of consonants. So we've got a P and a B and a, an aspirated P and B, often prenasalized. Um, the voice aspirates. And then you've also got um, breathy aspirated nasals, so ma and ma, uh, na, na, nya, nya. You'd also get ma and ma. Um, okay, and you have uh, breathy aspirated um, uh, voiced fricative, so you can have va and va, and ra and ra. La la. And here are some examples of the vowels in wa. So you, there are um, nine uh, contrasting unitary vowels, so nine vowel contrasts. So e, e, a, a down the front, o, o, u at the back, and then u and u. So high back unrounded vowels. Again, lots of mainland Southeast Asian languages have those. Um, and then lots of diphthongs. So you have ear, i, al, al, and ua in my analysis of phonology. Right, there we go. There are uh, some vowel quadrilaterals with those vowels on them. Okay, so wa has um, a very large number of sesquisyllables, so syllables with a minor. Uh, pre-syllable, a minor initial syllable with um, restricted vowel contrasts appended to um, a major syllable which has the full set of possible vowel contrasts and the register contrast. Um, and you often get, um, as you do in Burmese and lots of other languages around which uh, like this pattern, so Mon in particular and other Mon Khmer languages, you often get um, uh, bisyllables where the first syllable gets reduced to a, a minor syllable. So you might find the word suso, meaning muddled up, um, pronounced as suso or suso or suso or suso. Um, and some other examples of that. Um, a very common pre-syllable is uh, just an S with a sort of indistinct um, schwa in between the S and the, the, the major syllable. So to strike or kick is simplap. To be chapped is spri, to urge or hasten sagli, and to rinse singra. Um, and you can uh, see some minimal pairs there. So saang, firm, sang, want, sa'u, warm, su, intentionally, sa'ut, swollen, sup, and sa'u, rubber, so dog. Um, and in one the morphological system of prefix, prefixation which exist in, uh, existed in earlier forms of the language is all but gone. We leave out where there are just a few prefixes with um, uh, hard to discern, hard to recover um, range of functions. This pre-syllable S um, is by far the most common. It, according to Shorter, it probably results from the generalization in almost all prefixual contexts of a prefix which originally corresponded to those with an initial S in Palau and Riang Lam. Um, and if you read up uh, in the Diflo, Diflo of the Wa languages, you can find a reference to, uh, to that population. Um, okay, I'm going to run out of time. So here are some, here's some evidence of prefixation in earlier forms of the language. So la and gla, burn and hearth. Lang, glang, long, this long, ra, grag, ra, uh, sorry, grag, deep, and this deep. Those are these sort of demonstrative um, stative adjectives, stative verbs that um, describe 
which I was explaining to someone, you know, it's this deep and go, so you add a prefix to the word deep. Um, voicing of initial stop, so you get um, related pairs of words, boo, meaning thick, and boo, thickness, ding, big, and bing, size. Um, gear, thick, and gear, thickness. So these are hard to um, formalize, um, but there's lots of evidence that this went on in war in a previous stage, I think. Okay, on to a bit of uh, morphology. So compounding, wa is um, a supremely isolating language. The syntax is pretty similar to Thai and Khmer, Mon. Um, uh, languages like that on, in mainland Southeast Asia. Um, so we've got words for clothes where you often get uh, um, two synonyms put together in a compound. So gang krai is clothes twice, meaning clothing, things, goods, possessions. Um, and you can elaborate on that. So gang krai dai da is clothing or clothes. So two generic words, skirt and shirt, all together clothing and clothes, a bit more about those sorts of um, forms later. Um, words for uh, a noun associated with the second noun. So weapons is war equipment, equipment war, that way around. So um, my compound is a, my phrase is a left-headed. About yet, so relatives um, of the house, a member of the family. Gang yet, work to do with the house. Yet, um, yet, yeah, so a beehive, a bee house, and the word for toilet is yet ang, so the um, uh, shit house um, has little in the way of euphemism in wa. When we were compiling the dictionary, we found that the vocabulary was pretty earthy. There's no well developed system of politeness or euphemism or avoiding speaking to the point in wa. Right, um, compounding two, so you can form nouns using the relativizer ba. So the word for income or earnings is babun, the things that you get, that which you receive. Um, barach, basu is righteousness, that which is upright and straight. to form nouns. Um, a very large number of words in wa formed, so what uh, I think matters of. Um, called psychocollocation, so expressing emotions in terms of the way um, a part of the body or a, um, an organ is. So, if you're, um, if you um, think of uh, in Burmese, you, if you're, um, if you want to say you're worried, you say that your your mind, which is actually located where your heart is, your mind is hot. Um, and we find similar things in what. So, the word for heart is rom. Um, and if your heart is salty, so at rom means that you're means that you're angry. Auch rom, if your head is hot, it means that you're upset or irritated. Um, if your heart is spicy, so bright rom means uh, angry. And there's a whole series of them here that you can look at. Proverbs and sayings in war, so um, You'll see in the references at the end a um, uh, collection of about a thousand proverbs and sayings. Um, uh, and these generally pivot around a, a central rhyme. So we've got uh, three examples here. I'll have a go at reading the first one. So ban da nya la da grun. So lak is nya and light um, rhyme with each other around the, 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 two, the two halves of, um, of the proverb. So rest in a fragrant place, enter a hunter's hide, the joys of hunting. So a lot of the proverbs and sayings are about um, sort of food, life, um, uh, how to live healthily, how to get pleasure. It's quite a few to do with um, sex and courting and uh, all those sorts of things. So a prayer to ward off fire. Um, I haven't learned more for a while, so that's not great. But. So um, be romantic for a while, make a true effort once. So um, invest in long relationships, but uh, for short relationships, you just put in the effort. It's slightly earthy as it, uh, as it appears. Right, and elaborate expressions like Southeast Asian languages in general, um, and indeed um, Chinese, we find these sort of um, structured uh, four syllable, four morphine, um, formulations 
which uh, sound nice, which are a little bit more than, than some of their parts. So, um, and very often you have a, a sort of standard morpheme. So here for the word for food is bread. Um, and another more obscure or poetic morpheme for food is broom. Um, and they sort of fit together. They've got the same uh, consonant cluster at the beginning. So bret, broom, standard word is bret. The elaborate sort of more poetic word is broom. So ngā bret, ngā broom means leftovers, where you could just say ngā bret, but that would be boring. Ngā bret, ngā broom, you get this nice um, uh, four morpheme uh, phrase which uh, gives the whole a bit of uh, gives the whole thing a bit of twang. Okay, so to make food, so yuh bret is the standard word for making food, but yuh bret yuh brum sounds nicer. It sounds more um, has more impact and is more uh, wow factor. So another example, rom is heart, and ri is um, the this slightly less common morpheme for heart. So if you start afresh, you have a change of heart. And so loh rom, but loh rom loh ri is uh, more expressive. Okay, I'll move on. Large number of loan words from Chinese um, and Burmese, more Chinese than Burmese, but um, usage um, lexicon depends a lot on which side of the China Myanmar border you're on. So we've got some examples here. So the word for car in Wa is motot tu. So tu is for sort of Yunnanese. And most of the borrowings sound like Yunnanese Chinese for obvious reasons. Tu is the word for vehicle. Uh, moto is Burmese moto, probably you know, from the English word motor. Um, so you've got a real um, international hybrid of a word there. A nice example here, the word for knowledge is uh, uses the Chinese zhu yi, which is, comes out in what as zhu yi. And combined with the Burmese word pinya, which means it's from Pali, uh, banya, knowledge. So zhu yi pinya, again, you've got four syllables, so that gives the whole thing a bit of, a bit of twang. Um, the Bua word for knowledge, zhu yi pinya. And then we've got some examples of uh, borrowings from uh, Chinese, so jiao uh, shi for classroom, um, which is appended to a head noun, a uh, superordinary noun, yet, so the wa word for house. So house, which is a classroom building, which is a classroom, then yet jiao shi, yet chao si, because it comes out that same in wa. A mango, again, you have this um, thai word mak mung, which is a, sorry, mak mung, which is a mango, um, and you stick that um, after the wa, which is a generic wa word for fruit, which is bli. So bli mak mung is a mango. Um, a xi zhuang, which is the Chinese word for suit, after the wa word for clothes, so grang, grang si zhuang is uh, a suit. Bu, uh, dise, so dise, the English word by a Burmese, dise for uh, diesel oil, and bu, the wa word for oil. So those words with those forms are a very common word borrowing. Right, so a little bit about noun phrases. So they're all left-headed. You have um, a, a, um, a system of measure words or classifiers, but with, with Southeast Asian rather than Chinese word order. So you have the noun, then the number, and then the classifier. So a quail, so jok is a quail, di is one, and mu is a classifier. Um, so jok mu is a, a quail. Um, okay, so a very generous person. Bui dang ding tai the gal. So gal is the classifier for people. So generous person one classifier. Bui the gal. Okay, pronouns in wa. A nice set of uh, uh, basic wa pronouns. Um, and uh, like other minority languages in, in um, the Tibetan Burman minority languages spoken in, in Myanmar, but uh, less common around um, mainland Southeast Asia. Um, Wa contrasts um, has um, uh, some uh, dual pronouns and inclusive, exclusive, um, uh, second person pronouns. There's the full set. Let's move on. 
um, kinship words as pronouns again. So like Burmese and other Southeast Asian languages, wa uses words like grandfather, grandmother, brother-in-law, um, and uses some pronouns to refer to um, pr plural pronouns to refer to um, singular addressees. Um, but otherwise, you don't find in Wa this sort of um, diglossic um, development of the language with a, a more basic and a more formal um, uh, register. That, that is. Um, tense mode aspects, so like uh, Chinese, like other Southeast Asian languages, you have these uh, pre-verbal morphemes. Um, as I said, even here, so there's a perfective marker, a negative marker. It's very initial remote past marker. Okay, so hot um, corresponds quite closely to the function of look in Chinese. So okay, in modals, there are high frequency, partly grammaticalized verbs. So the verb to own is redeployed in grammaticalized form as a, as a possessive. To receive is used as can. So like Chinese, like Burmese, like Thai. Verb to see, to, to try and do something is see and do it. To the, this causative benefactive verb to give that happens in one other verb, to, um, progressive with ought to live. So that's like, um, yeah. Um, so lots in parallel with, um, as you'd expect, with neighboring languages of different language families. Right. Um, and that's it. So a little. Uh, romp through some uh, some highlights of of WA for you. Here are some references. Um, do get in touch if you're interested in WA. There is uh, um, much more to uh, read and learn about WA and its dialects and related languages from Northern Long Khmer Palang languages. Um, and that's all. Thank you very much for listening.